And we are live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey. This is a, uh, a special presentation. Um, I suppose everybody knows, at least by the title, uh, what, what we've got going on here today. It's going to be a pretty long show. And I uh, just want to, before we bring our guest on, I, I just want to preface the show with a few things. You know, I uh, want to thank some people. Uh, Chris Connor from The Trail to Bigfoot. Uh, thank him for suggesting to Mark to uh, to come to us. Uh, Bill and Sheila Tucker, of course. I talked to Bill on the phone uh, about Mark a few times. Had gotten uh, not a lot of detail about the incident, but uh, Bill's been uh, Bill's been a big help uh, to Mark anyway. So a uh, big shout out to the Squatch team and uh, to Max Powers. I uh, just want to thank all you guys for. Uh, for what you've done help facilitating this and uh we we definitely appreciate it now um i talked to mark on the phone i was driving home <clears throat> from west texas which uh everything went well by the way um a big shout out to all you guys that uh that donated uh to help get there that uh, you guys don't know how much that means to us that you guys do that um now, I talked to Mark for about an hour and a half on the phone. And it's uh, the whole thing is pretty profound. And I just want to say this. Um, I didn't know Mark before this. I'd obviously watched him and Chris, you know, for, for years and what they did. And uh, when he got to a point in the story where he was getting emotional, he would swear. But then immediately apologize. And I mean, I, I work in the oil field, you know, I don't, I really don't care. But uh, he said, I can't help it. I said, I've never been a person that, that really swears a lot. You know, I just, uh, and he did it like five or six times every time he would, he would swear and just apologize. So if, if it happens and he just can't help it, what I'm saying is it's not licensed for you guys to go get vulgar in the chat. Okay. If you happen to hear a swear word on here and um, you know, just the story itself, uh, parents, mom and dad, you guys watching this, uh, I would suggest that you watch this first, not because I think some swear words going to pop out. Kids hear that stuff all the time, but, uh, <clears throat> the content, uh, it could be pretty disturbing. So, uh, I would just suggest that you, you, uh, you watch this first before you let the kids watch it. Um, all right. Well, without any for any more ado, uh, our guest for this evening, Mr. Mark Barton, how are you, buddy? I'm good. <laughs> I know. I'm, I know uh, you were you were a little nervous about being here. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I know, but we're gonna take we're gonna take good care of you. You're gonna be we're gonna be uh be just fine. And we'll we've already got people are just pouring in right now. Um, I know you probably didn't want to hear that, but <laughs> I told you <laughs> well, you should probably, probably expect it. <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, Carrie, Car it's me and you. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. I'm not even looking at Daniela. No offense, Daniela. Well, just I'm looking, Carrie, I'm looking at Carrie. Okay, so okay. just just to let everybody know, you know, this is not going to be your standard regular interview that we normally do. You know, if you guys want to know any, you know, intimate details about Mark, you know, you can uh, you can probably go and watch uh, the Trail to Bigfoot. If you haven't uh, subscribed to the Trail to Bigfoot already, uh, I'm not. I don't know where you've been, but uh, you need to. And that's that's the Trail to Bigfoot. That's on YouTube. That's uh, Mark Barton and Chris Connor. They've been doing this for six or seven years now and have gotten some really, uh, really incredible evidence. This uh, this thing that happened to you, Mark, um, it, it's it's obviously affected you profoundly. And when I talked to Bill Tucker, who's a really good friend, uh, he called me the first time about two days before I talked to you. And he said, you know, something happened to, to Mark. He didn't give me any real details of what happened. And he said he, he's really shaken up by it. And uh, then he calls me when I'm on my way and says, look, Mark wants to talk to you. And then a minute after I got off the phone with him, you called. And then we went on for almost two hours. And it was very, I was disturbed. I'll tell you that much. And uh, it, it really to me, it makes a lot more sense. You know, I, I hate labeling anything woo, 
just because it's got that stigma but there's there's something there and you know, this is our platform here is for everybody. We don't close ourselves off to anybody, but what you were talking about made a lot more sense to me than, uh, than anything else that I'd really ever heard. Now that I've said all of that, um, I'm going to let you go. You start where you want to start and just, uh, tell us what happened. All right. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You sound you good. All right. All right. Anyway, um, I, I want to thank you, Carrie, for um, allowing me to be on your channel. Certainly. Um, I appreciate it very much. Of course. Um, and I want to thank everybody who has uh, been praying for me and sending me thoughts and good thoughts and uh, however you do that. Um, your goodwill. Um, I, um, I, I read some of it on our channel and, and I know Max and Bill and Sheila have told me things and uh, um, I, uh, I very much appreciate all that. Shout out like you did to Bill and Sheila Tucker. They're, they become family to me and um, I, I don't have the words, you know. Yeah, and absolutely. My, absolutely. My brother, and he's my brother now. Good old Max Powers. Yeah, yeah. We did, we we thank Max for the stuff he's yeah. done too. And Max real quick, my brother. real real quick, I just want to let everybody know that we we will take questions later. Just yeah. uh, just make sure that it's we'll let you know when we're going to be ready for the questions okay. for uh for Mark just uh for the chat. Guys, make sure you put that in caps for us for sure. Um, our moderators are, you guys be nice because they are, they're going to be on it. They're going to be timing out anybody that's being vulgar and hateful and just trolling. Um, you know, all our regulars that come here, you guys know, you know, that's, uh, we have the best moderators on YouTube as far as I'm concerned. And we appreciate uh, what they're doing. Just about our first hour, we're going to take a five minute break and then we're going to collect ourselves and come back for the rest of the story because we're going to be here for a little while. Just yeah, want to let everybody know that we'll take questions later. So just kind of save those. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Um, of course, and then a shout out to Chris. You know, do I need to say his last name, Chris Connor? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, they know. Chris? my best buddy and if I, you hadn't have been there when I came back I wouldn't have been alive I would have done something bad and I know it's been tough for you you know it's you know tough for me but it's been tough for you you're my best friend best I told Carrie you're my, my bestest buddy and talk like a little kid, but you are, and I know you're listening. I couldn't ask for a better friend, you know. And I'm here on this channel because of Chris. You know, Chris. If you, uh, if, if anybody wonders why I'm not on the trail to Bigfoot, it's because Chris and I uh, were afraid of retribution from our employer because we work with professional people. And this would not sit well in a professional environment. So then I, I asked Chris, and um, actually I asked Max and Mike and Bill, you know, who do I go to? And, and Chris said, you know, go see Carrie. So I did. I'm glad about that. But Chris, it means a lot. It really means a lot to us. Absolutely. And hey, then we're on your time. You're not on ours. So take us whatever you need yeah, to do. I know I'm going kind of slow here, but it's fine. It's fine. Trust me. We're good. And uh, it's really, really hard for me to do this. Okay. Because when I talk about it, even though it's been how many months? Five. It doesn't go away. It's just like it's fresh. You know? That's not very long. Five months. It's... I'm sure a lot of people here can relate. So, um, I'm going to do this. 
first week of uh, February. And actually, I had rented it uh, around the time of our town hall in November. I rented a cabin out in the middle of nowhere in the National Forest, and I will not say where at, for a week. And I was there from Friday to Friday, all by myself. And I did it not to <laughs> Bigfoot, okay? I had nothing to do with it. I did it because at the time I was around a lot of people and um, uh, pull, people pull and tug on me, you know? And I, I needed some downtime. And I, you know, hey, <laughs> best place, okay? Go by yourself, middle of nowhere. You have cell service um, and you're all by yourself. And I, I, thought it, I thought it would be a good idea. So um, I went there and then I had a, a friend pick me up and take me to the cabin and drop me off. I didn't even have a, a vehicle there. I couldn't have left if I wanted to. And then he left and locked the gate behind me. And I should have known, you know. I look back on it. I should have fucking known, you know. <laughs> every night, after, right after dark, I cooked out on a fire pit every evening, you know, and they had a, gr a griddle thing on a grill on it. And take, I took wood and I cook and I cook my food outside on, on that uh, fire thing. And I would hear a hog in the same spot, you know, where the yard and then it hits the tree line and it gets real dense. And I would hear a hog. You know, I know what a hog sounds like, okay, in the, in the swamp. And I would get up in the morning, go out there, and I'd see absolutely no evidence. And hogs are pretty destructive, okay? I mean, they leave evidence. They root and they tear and they tromp around. And I kept thinking, oh, that's weird. Well, and I'd, I had taken a trail cam because we were hoping to get uh, pictures of Bambi. People like Bambi, you know, like... On our channel, our million view video was Bambi. It had nothing to do with Bigfoot or Chris and I. Chris and I, Chris and I weren't. I think we were in to take it up and tear it down. But Bambi, oh, people love Bambi. What the hell? So I was hoping to get Bambi. And I told Chris, I said, give me a trail cam, Chris, and I'll put it up. And I had put it up in one spot. And on the way there to check on it, I heard the hog. I saw no evidence, you know. I heard it close, too. Um, and then I went and took the trail cam, and thank God, and you'll know why later, I moved it right by the exit road because I had seen some deer there, and I and I, I took it there. can't remember what day it was. So that hog was no hog. Okay. I, I should. I wasn't a, that was no hog. So, and I don't remember what day it was exactly. Um, you had been there for a few days sure. already, right? Oh, you yeah, had already I, been there I, a few I, days. I got there on Friday, yeah. And so I think, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm, because see, I, my, my mind is messed up now, okay? Well, just take your time. I'm not... No hurry. My mind is my mind is messed up. So, but I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. So, because it was going to rain Thursday, and I was leaving Friday morning, and I wanted to use all my wood up because I wouldn't be able to use it Thursday, you know. So I went out on that day, like I always do. I heard the hog, <laughs> that hog, and made a fire, cooked my meal. And then, you know, it was very dark. I don't know what time it was. And then I just put a ton of wood on that fire. I had this huge fire going. And I just, I was sitting there watching the fire. And I looked through the fire and I saw um, eyes shine. And for me, 
I'm laughing now because they're like, it's like one of the holy pillars of big footing, you know, <laughs> seeing eye shine. And I, it wasn't what I thought it would be. It was kind of dim red and about five foot off the ground. And I was looking at it through the uh, fire, you know, the, the fl uh, flame and then the, how it does the air and everything. And I would go like this and it would disappear. And I would go like this and it would disappear. And I look back on it now. There's something real mesmerizing about that eye shine. So I got up and I went around and I used my flashlight. It was really bright. I shined it and I saw nothing, nothing. Come back around and I sit down and there it was. And I think I did that twice, maybe three times. Now you had never seen eye shine before this, right? I've never seen, you know, that's why it was like one of the holy pillars of Bigfooting, you know. If you see eye shine, everybody brags about it. You go back and you tell your buddies and, you know. <laughs> I mean, especially red, you know. that's especially red. I don't know. Are there other colors? I don't know. That was red. Me. You know how I feel about this. <clears throat> well, no, I don't, but I saw I shot. Why didn't I take my phone out, take a picture of it? Didn't even occur to me. It didn't even didn't even occur to me to take my phone out and take a picture of it. I mean, I'm in the swamp with Chris and we record everything. If we hear something, we turn the camera over there. If we see something, we hit. And then uh, behind me, uh, Okay, man. You're all right. Just breathe. You're okay. You are amongst friends. I guarantee it. I'm looking at you, Carrie. Right here, Bubba. Um, behind me, something, and I use the word hands because you know, that's what it felt like. Pressed down on my shoulders. God damn it. And pushed me down in my chair. And I couldn't get out. And my panic. And my fear. A man does not like to be held down in a chair. And I went into like panic mode and my fear and my dread. And I knew I was in serious shit. You know, I got into this for kind of fun, you know. My wife had died and Chris came to me and told me his story when he was a kid and said, Mark, let's go up to Georgia. And I thought, what the, f what the hell? I have nothing else to do, you know. It'll be therapeutic for me, you know. The only thing I'd ever watched was, uh, uh, what was the show, uh, Finding Bigfoot. Everybody watched it. You know? Yeah, I think everybody caught one of those. And uh, that's the only thing I knew. I said, okay, let's go. I'm with my friend, Chris. And came back. And Chris said, man, I'm going to go out in the swamp. You want to go? Let's go. Let's go hunt this thing. And I was like, oh, okay. Sounds like fun. I didn't know why. You know. And it's always been fun. 
That night it wasn't fun. And then uh, they got in my head. And we have this word we use, you know, it's called uh, mind speak. And doesn't that sound so pretty? You know, it's not pretty. It's, it's not goddamn pretty. <laughs> They bullied their way in my head. It's like they just went in and, uh, you know, you ever been in a mosh pit? Throwing elbows. Raped, raped me against my will in my head. Get out of the way, we're here. And you have no choice in the matter. My fucking mind went to marbles. It just fell apart, you know? And then this is what they said to me. And I say the words said and voice and all, because I don't, there are no words to ex describe this, you know? But I knew things and I heard things. I know what those fuckers sound like. I'm telling you, Carrie. Multiple multiple voices? Was multiple voices? There was more than one there. There was one behind me, pressing me down, and they swept to the right side of me, to behind me. Nothing on the left of my swept to the right side. And they speak as one, but there was more than one. And I realized they're never alone. Never alone and they act as one. <laughs> and this is what they said, and I, I've, got, I've got a piece of paper because my mind doesn't work very good when I get into this, and just, I don't feel like it does. This is what they said. No particular order, I'm just gonna say it, all right? This is what they said to me. We're the predator and you're the prey. And we hunt you. That's what it's all about. They're predator and we're prey. And it wasn't weird, I am prey. And we hunt for sport. Just like I would hunt a deer for sport just like I would hunt a hog or a rabbit. That's what I was. I was the prey. And they were the predator. And Carrie, I knew I was a dead man. God damn it. At that moment, I realized I wasn't leaving alive. I, I knew it. They took me down the bottom of the rabbit hole. And everything I took with me was of no avail. So if you think a gun's going to help you, if you're thinking a gun is going to help you when you get to the bottom, when they take you to the bottom of the rabbit hole, you're, you're a goddamn fool. You won't even know how to use it. And what do we take as men? Our strength, our will, our resolve. They held me, held me in a chair. I'm a 200 pound man. I'm six foot four. My mind went to mush. And I'll say this, and you know, I don't care. My faith failed me. Why didn't I pray? Why didn't I cry out to God? Why? What the hell? A Christian man. Everything fell to the ground. And I was a dead man. Oh, and they just kept talking. Kept talking. He said, they said, we're, there's prey, there's pawns, and there's people that we just don't care about. So you're either a prey to them 
or you're a pawn to them or they, they ignore you. Not everybody's prey, they say. But there's pawns, they called them. And the pawns, they use the pawns to push stuff and give stuff to the prey. So that big footprint that we got, go to our channel, you know. A pawn gave us that big footprint that because Chris and I were getting discouraged. And if you've ever big footed for years, you know what discouragement is. <laughs> and you're just ready to chuck it, all right? I'm, I'm not going back to that swamp, I'm done, you know? This is, and all of a sudden, we get a footprint. Not just a footprint, go, go check it, you know? It's a huge, perfect. Man, Chris and I got so excited. You know what we did? We did the town hall meeting around it. They told me that Chris was praying, but Beata and Betty were pawns. And anything that happened to Betty and Beata, that Beata is Chris's wife and Betty is his sister, and if you go to the channel, they, they go out with us. Anything that happened to them was only to be, to keep us in the swamp. So they were pawns. So when Bayada got her camera stick pushed, it was to keep Chris and I in the swamp. And when Betty got her ponytail pulled, it was to encourage us to keep us going back to, to the swamp. And once you're prey, you're prey, they said. I didn't realize that at first. Once you're prey, you're prey. So you essentially became a trophy to them. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. In notes. Well, is a deer a trophy? What do we do? We take it home and bring it. Yeah, well, the racks we take home and mount above our fireplace, I did. I had one. Take the hog heads, put them up on our wall. That's all we are to them. That's all I was to them. Without regard to me as a person, the family I would leave behind. They told me I was to go first. They would kill me first. And then they would take Chris, because what would Chris do? They said Chris would go back in the swamp in memory of Mark. I'm not going to stop. Mark is dead. We're going to go back and go back in memory of Mark. And they would take his life. They love sport. They groomed us for the kill, they said. Everything that happened in that fucking swamp was to groom us for the kill. Go, go watch our channel. You know, Carrie, a lot of shit went on. Yeah. And you know what? Chris and I had only been out in the swamp for a year or two, and people that had been out for 20 years didn't have the shit that we got. I think it's where you were, too. Like, and we thought it was, we thought we were special. We thought they liked us. We, were, we thought they were developing a relationship with us. They were grooming us for the kill. So all the chatter and the talk and the thuds and the knocks, all the time we saw, and we'll talk about this in a minute, the cloaked figures and the pixelation and the physical evidence, the tree structures, the footprints. And we saw footprints, but it's hard to cast in Florida. Right. Grooming us. Calling us in. What do you do when you turkey hunt? How do you bring the turkeys to you? Tell me, how do you do it? Yeah. That little... Call them in. 
You call them in. I do want to say this right quick, just to provide just a little context. When you say they, you're not talking about the Sasquatch themselves. I'm going to get to that. Okay. I just, want to, I, just, I just want to give some context to the yeah. people here. We're not talking about the hairy beast here. <laughs> okay. But we're going to talk about the hairy beast. Okay, you're let's getting, talk about it now. You're getting a ton of support here, by the way. Just the, FYI. They said there's predators, there's helpers, and there's observers. That's how they're structured. The predators, once a, once a person is... And we'll talk about this. Once a person becomes prey, I don't know whether they're assigned or whether they're appointed. They never told me. I don't know, but I know they get a predator. I had a that guy, a, a shit eater that was pushing me in the chair was my predator because he was taking the kill. The people, the people, what do I call them? People, God damn it. The ones that swept to the right were the helpers. They were probably observers. And the observers, well, what do you do? You take your 12-year-old boy out to hunt with you, don't you? And you train him and you show him how to use a gun and how to hunt. Well, they take their unlearned ones and they watch the kill and the hunt. And you know what? When I when I came back and We'll talk about that too, but I told Chris, you know, what happened to me. He said, Mark, you, you never, you're always using plural. And I realized there are always more than one multitude. Once a prey predator is assigned, they all fall in line. They said no one jostles, no one fights. They don't fight amongst themselves. No one tries to take his kill. They all fall in line with the predator and they act as one. They said it's like a magician's trick. And I had the sense that I look back on it now, they were telling me things to, um, so that I could understand them and putting them in ways that I could understand in a fucking condescending way. Their, their arrogance, and they're condescending towards me. And their pride is off the charts. They're arrogant son of a bitches. And I suppose they have every right to be. Isn't that how I treat a deer or a hog? Very arrogant towards him. Come here, turkey. I'll kill your ass and mount you on my wall. Go back and brag about it. Tell all my buddies how my hunt went. They said we take the kill and we go back from where we came. I'm going to talk about that. They told me where they came. And we celebrate and we talk about our great kills and we brag amongst ourselves and that's all we are to them it's a magician's trick in the right and how do magicians do their thing in the right hand they said is the hairy beast the sasquatch the bigfoot whatever we call that the hairy beast is in the right hand and everything that goes along with it the footprints the physical evidence the tree structures everything that is a physical i see when we see it it's in the right hand. But they said in the left hand. And I had my hand down. I had my right hand up in the air and my left hand down by the floor. Are the masters. And the masters. The predators. They call themselves the masters. Are setting everything up. Everybody looks at the hairy beast. And no one's looking at the masters, the cloaked, the whispery creatures, the hooded creatures, the creatures that dart between trees and you run over there and they're not there. The masters are setting everything up for the kill. And while we're all looking at this hairy beast and all caught up in the hairy beast, 
were being groomed for the kill. So after that, the hairy beast means absolutely the goddamn nothing to me. I don't give a shit about what you saw. It means nothing. It means nothing. That hairy beast is not going to kill you. The masters will kill your ass. It's a magician's trick. They told me they killed Tim Pisano. Now you got to realize I didn't. You broke up just a little bit there, Mark. Okay. They told me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. They told me they killed Tim Pisano. They called me. They called him my brother. Now you got to realize I despised Tim Fasano. Right. And you got to take a lot of Well, only because he really killed us constantly. Right and made fun of us. Two weeks before he died, he went to Knox Creek and made fun of us. So I was like, okay, I told Chris, I said, I'm done with this man. I don't have nothing to do with him because we were trying to reach out and stuff. I'm done with him. And those suckers called me brother with him because he was prey also. And for Tim didn't deserve that. They called him a weak kill, but they said a kill nevertheless. So I actually asked them, don't ask me how this, ask him. I said, why show me all this goddamn stuff and then kill my fucking ass? And this is what they said. The greater the knowledge, the greater the kill. And we love great kills, they said. Their intention was to show all this to me and more. I'm not done. And then I take it to my grave. And they get a great kill. And they go back. And they celebrate their great kill because he died with all this knowledge. It was never intended for me to survive. And uh, say any of this. Who knows what they told Tim before they killed his ass? They brought up Bob Gimlin. They said Patty was not afraid. See, all this time I thought Patty was afraid. She was fleeing for her life. She looked back because, are they following me? Oh no, I'm afraid. The humans are coming after me. That's what I thought. It, I mean, what else would I think? They said Patty wasn't afraid. They used the word Patty. Because <laughs> I, you know, they knew. She was leading them into the forest. And she was looking back to see if they were following her. Because she wanted them to. I guarantee you she was bringing them, bringing Bob and his partner to the masters. Well, they were already there, but they were, they wouldn't have ended well. He said it was a cat and mouse game. I remembered when I was a kid, we had a cat and you know, we lived out in the country, so we'd get mice in our house. And I would watch a cat capture a mouse and then bat it around, mm -hmm. playing with it. And when the mouse would hold really still, what would the cat do? Nudge it to get it to move. And they said, when you get discouraged and you don't move, we nudge you.
I didn't go in the swamp for two months. Uh, this is the story with, uh, I said with Max. I didn't go to the swamp for two months. I can't remember why. I live in the city, five stories up in a condo. I was walking from the downtown park to my condo where I pushed the, butt, the code in, go up the elevator. And I saw a cloaked figure to my right. And I was like, what the fuck? So what you do, you try to recreate it because that's what we do. I backed up because if it's just a, a shadow from the street light, I should be able to back up and recreate that. And I did it three times. Yeah. I went upstairs, text I know, a texter called Chris. I said, God damn, they know where I live. I walked at night at that time for exercise. And five times in separate occasions, I saw those cloaked, I call them whispery creatures. I know now they're their masters watching me in the alley, in the parking garage, in the stairway up five times. I went to Chris and I said, you know what? I never felt threatened, never felt afraid. I said, I think they want me to get back out in the swamp. I'm listening. I, th I think they want me to get back out in the swamp. I go back out in the swamp and they go away. I never see them. I, haven't, I, I never saw them after that. I, uh, are you there? Can you hear me? Cause I, yeah, I, got, I got you. I'll just, all right. If I, have to, if I have to call for anything. I'll do like, so nobody can hear me coughing. Into okay. it. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't know. No problem. No problem. Um, what they were doing, they said was they were nudging me to get me back out again. Like I said, Chris and I would get very discouraged. We get a huge footprint, get all the things again. They ought to get her pole pushed. And incredible story. And it was all to groom us, to keep us going back. They manipulated us. And we thought they were our friends. They even told me when they decided to make us pray, go to our channel and look for awesome activity. It's the name of the video. This is what happened. We were taking down a uh, audio recorder. Chris is looking a different direction and he sees a black cloaked figure, which is dog height. That seems to be Chris's thing, the height going between just, just like that, just like that. And he turns to me and tells me, well, I'm all up in this audio thing. I'm not paying any attention. I turn around a different direction and I see a hooded cloak figure running between trees. So I tell Chris, I said, I'm going, just follow me, let's go. I run over there, of course, there's nothing there. There's never nothing there. And we hear a grunt and then we come out into a little clearing and knocks start happening. And I can't remember, Chris, we're talking a lot and they surround us. It's a little unnerving. And they told me, they said, we were talking to each other about whether you're worthy to be prey. And they said, the knock is not, the knock. You only hear like this much of it. Okay. And it sounds like a knock to our ears. They said it's a vocalization and there's really this much. I have my hands spread out as far as they can go. And you can't hear that. And you don't understand that. And you won't. You just hear this much. And to you, it sounds like a knock. They said, and then that last knock we heard that was far off was the final knock. It was the, it settled. And they said, after that moment, you were praying. And predators were assigned to us. They said they were toxic to us. Everything about them is toxic. They use the word toxic. If I looked at them long enough, it would do harm to my body. I realized at that time, it was touching me on the shoulders. Killing my fucking ass, holding me down. 
They said, if you go where we're come from, you will, it's toxic to you. They told me the veil, and they called it a veil, that they go, the veil between us and them is flexible. See, I always, I knew there was something going on. I talk about it in that video with Max, you know, because they, they just disappear. You'd hear vocals that were so close to you that you should be able to see something, but you don't. Bayada gets her camera pole shoved. She instantly turns around and sees nothing. Betty gets her ponytail pulled. Turn around, nothing. We hear thuds, nothing. Can't see anything. And repeated years of this. They said the veil is flexible. I always thought it was like a rigid thing because that's what we see in the movies, you know. They can flex behind the veil, reach out, grab Bayada's camera pole and push it. And she turns around and can't see shit. They can pull Betty's ponytail she turns around and doesn't see shit because they're doing it from the other side of the veil because it's flexible for them. Or they can pass through the veil. The masters. Well, they all can, really. That's pretty unnerving, actually. Yeah, isn't it? Remember the video when I'm down by the creek? I reference it with Max. And Betty and Chris and Bayada go in way back behind me and they go into the wood line. And I see a cloaked figure maybe 20 feet behind me. Black whispery creature, I called him. I thought it was Chris and Bayada because you know what your mind does, it, it makes sense of all this or it tries to. So mm -hmm. it, it something familiar. Oh, and I thought to myself, oh, Chris came up on me and, and I didn't hear him. So I, I sweep around to say something to him, and it's not there. I went behind the veil. Now, real quick, before before you had this experience, when you saw these wispy creatures, these dark things, did you think that they were one and the same with the Sasquatch, or did you think it was something well, different? Well, I, I knew it was part of the phenomenon because it, we go out looking for the hairy beast, and we get all this other stuff. And I didn't, I always had a sense that it was all related. Right. I, I, fuck, I know now, don't I? Um, it is all related. And um, I, uh, the whispered creatures are the masters. And the hairy beasts are like, what? The entertainment? The ruse. It, yeah, it's the magician's trick. It's the... Chris said, well, after I got done telling him everything that you're going to hear tonight, it was like he was in the Wizard of Oz and the curtain was pulled back. And he saw what it was all about. He said, and he even told me, and I, I don't want to speak for him, but it's like, holy shit, it makes sense now. You know? Thank you. Uh, oh. thank, thank you, Jamie Cotterill, by the way, for that $20 super sticker. Sorry to interrupt, Mark. Just <laughs> It's all right. Thank you for that. I just want to make sure that I got everything. Yeah, I'm trying not to interrupt any. I just, uh, I remember the conversation we had on the phone and I just, I don't want to direct you because I know you had this stuff written down. I, I mean, a lot of things are coming to mind, but eventually you're coming with this stuff. So I'm, I'm trying here. There's more, but it happened. And when I came back, Chris said, Mark, you're going to remember things that, that you forgot. Because that's, I, you know, so people do that when they go through trauma. Right, writing it down writing. helps that for sure. But it, uh, it happened to me three different occasions, and I'm going to talk about that later on. So don't, I'm, I'm just encouraging it. There's more, and there's some really important information you need to hear that's going to come later because I'm talking about when I get back and what happened when I got back and what what's going on with me now. Okay. So right. we're going to, we're going to get to this other stuff. So here, and then obviously I didn't die. I'm here. And this is what happened. 
no fire. And I have this huge fire going. And it popped. And uh, in my head, it sounded like a 20 gauge shotgun, 10 gauge shotgun went off in my, my fucking head. It just, and I fucking jumped up. And I heard something say to me, and it wasn't them. It said, run. One word, run. Terry, I ran like a motherfucker. This 67 year old man with a bad knee who can't run. I ran like a goddamn motherfucker. I ran in that cabin. I slammed the door shut and I locked it. They were right outside the door. I, I, I felt them. I knew it. And they were still in my gut. They were. Fuck. Fuck. You're okay, man. Take your time. It struck me. It struck me when you said that. It's okay. You're okay. I just want to say when you first told me that, Carrie, I don't run. I can't run. My knees are bad. I'm 47. You know, you got 20 years on me. So I understand the running. And you said you ran like you were 18 and had never run before. I, that just that, that really that struck me when you first told me that. The father intervened. I don't know if. You know, you know, I know people listening. There's not not Christian people or whatever divine intervention, the universe. I don't care what word you use. Put on it. I don't. I don't care. My father intervened. Oh my God! I was powerless. I was a dead man. I'm a dead man walking, carry. I, I don't, I shouldn't be here. It's, it's a bit strange they couldn't catch me. My, being a Christian, I guess, I believe that once the father intervened, they couldn't lay a hand on me. And you said that pop was like a shotgun going off in your head. It was very loud, right? Shotgun in my fucking head. I don't know, we've all heard fires pop. They don't sound right. like that. But unless you have a can of gas. <laughs> right. I have a can of gas or air sign. And I went in the cabin, and this is what they said to me. This is important, folk. They said, let us through the threshold. I would have been safe in a tent. Let us through the threshold. I didn't feel it at the time, but I look back on it now. And I was in control then. And I didn't feel like it because my mind was a goddamn. I pulled my phone out and I didn't know how to use it. There's something about them and electronics. We know that. I didn't know how to use my phone. I was going to call, call Bobby Chris. I couldn't use my phone. And they said it over and over and over and they wouldn't shut up. It was tormenting. I can't explain to you, Carrie, how tormenting it was for me. Because they were mad, they were furious. It was beyond human anger. It was something un unworldly. What is it about the threshold that keeps them out? At that moment, it became a threshold to me. That doorway did. Like I said, I would have. I knew at the moment I would have been safe in a tent. I had to willingly at that moment let them in. 
If I would have opened that door, they would have killed my fucking ass right there. And I would have been one of those 411 stories. Which... Uh, and, uh, the Father created a threshold for me. That's how I see it, because I'm a Christian man. But, uh, you know, if you're not a Christian man, you could you could take that however works for you, okay? But the way I see it is, Father made a threshold for me to keep him out. I'm, I'm beyond grateful. I don't have words. I sh he didn't have to do that for me. Carrie, how many people have they found that didn't have a threshold? Tim Fasson. Yeah. Or they had a threshold and they let me in. What the fuck? So you know what I did? What? I had whiskey and I drank. I drank. I tried to get those things out of my head. I got fucking drunk. I passed out on the couch. I got up the next morning and they were there. I drank all the next day. I didn't leave the cabin. I was terrified. I could not open that door. I would not open that door. But I got drunk. And I, I've forgotten about this till recently. I don't think Chris, I don't think you know this. I peaked twice that day because I'm not a drinker. I, you know, I brought the whiskey only because I, you know, that's what you do as a man. You go out in the cabin, you smoke. I brought a cigar. I don't smoke at all. I smoked a cigar, drank whiskey. That's what you do. <laughs> and relaxing. It's just. And so I'm not a drinker. Uh, I, I was a drinker. I was a drinker that night. So uh, I guess it was the next day, so it had to be Wednesday. My buddy came to get me. Thought I was hungover. And I, uh, I couldn't tell him, you know, what am I going to tell him? Bigfoot tried to kill me. You know, who's going to believe this shit? I mean, I wouldn't believe it. It would not happen to me, you know? And I was fucking goddamn back. And uh, he came to get me. I was terrified to open that door. But I had to, you know? Open that door. And he thought it was, he got irritated with me because when we were taking things out to the car, I'd stay right with him, you know? And he'd go back and I'd hug him, you know. He said, what, what the fuck, Mark? You know, what, are you, what are you doing here? I didn't say nothing. I just said, I don't feel good and I, I'm afraid I'm going to pass out, so I'm staying with you. Something like that. I don't know. He said, excuse up. And the problem was, and we left, and the problem was, I had that trail cam I had to get. I told Chris if that was my trail cam, I would have left it there, but it wasn't mine. I suppose I could have left it. He would have understood. But. What do you so think I, you would have? What do you think you would have done if Chris hadn't come? You'd still be there. It wasn't Chris. It, oh, what do you mean? Or, or if anybody, I, I thought you were talking about Chris. I'm sorry. If nobody oh, would have come, to get I you, had another friend. Chris didn't come and get me. It was another friend. Okay. If if no one would have come to get you, what what would you have done? I would have died in that cabin. <laughs> I don't know. Still be there. I could have opened that fucking... Well, eventually the people from... They come and clean it. So the cleaning people would clean my gas and saw right. me. You know, so I was like, whatever. Yes. Yeah, somebody would have came. So I guess I wouldn't have died there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing now. Thank you. That makes That's little... good. Hey, do you want to take a break? Sure. Take a break right quick. Let's take that five. That was a good time because everything now is what happened afterwards when I talked to Chris and things that I have remembered, they told me that I didn't remember initially and those are very important things so everybody please um stay so you can hear all of it okay yeah we're just gonna just gonna be a couple of minutes 
and uh, okay. and we'll get right. started right back. There's there's a ton of people right. watching here, so I'm I'm gonna make uh, just uh, another announcement or two here, and uh, and we'll be back in in five, ladies and gentlemen. Add myself back right quick. Look, the when we started this, there were a few of you. Um, there weren't uh, half as many uh, people watching, and and I tried to preface it with, you know, parents don't let your kids watch this. Just a suggestion, you know, until you watch it, you know, and then be your own be your own judge here because this stuff uh, to me is pretty disturbing to hear and uh, and to see what Mark is going through here is uh, it, it, it's a lot. Uh, it, it's a lot for me. And I talk to a lot of people. Um, again, when I talked to Mark on the phone, driving down I-20, I was coming through Dallas. We had been on the phone for a little while, and he would swear and then immediately apologize. Carrie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, look, I work in the oil field. You know, you're not bothering me. He said, I just, I don't normally do that. So just not, not making excuses for Mark. He's a, he's a grown man. But you guys know we try to keep this channel family, but it's an it's an emotional thing. And he says they just it just happens. They just come out. I was like, we don't care. Swear all you want to. So just saying that's not normally the way he is. If you guys have been watching him for any amount of time, he's it's not normally it just happens. There's actually uh some kind of conditions, not Tourette's, but something related to it. I don't want to say that's what that is, but the guy's emotional. You guys can tell that. So, uh, again, rest of the story will be back here in just a few minutes. And uh, thank you, guys. All right, we're going to get started back here in just a just a minute. <clears throat> Mark and Daniela are backstage. Um, real quick, if you have not gone and subscribed and check out uh, the Trail to Bigfoot, uh, it's Mark Barton and Chris Connor. Uh, they've been going for six or seven years for a, a while uh, down there in Florida. I think a place they call it the Green Swamp. Uh, they've got hundreds of videos, uh, just a ton of evidence that they've collected and experiences that they've had. Um, if you haven't already, go check that out. But there's an interview that Max Powers did with Mark Barton before any of this happened. And you, you can actually see the difference um, from that interview to now. So you can go, it came out uh, on Max's channel yesterday. Max Powers, M A X P O W E R S, uh, on YouTube. Just go look at that and, and see the interview he did with Mark. Then, uh, like I said, it was back in maybe last year. I can't remember if it was maybe January. It was before this happened to Mark. Um, and just just check out the difference there. But I think everybody's back. Danielle, are you back? Ready to go? Oh no. That's not, no, that's not. It's weird Here. that's happened. 
your mute. Oh. Okay. I'm in the right place now. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, now, just summarize. You've you've gone through this experience. These masters, which are not the hairy beast. They're, they were holding you down. They were taking something from you, right? Were they, were they while they were holding you down, they, that was, this was the process of killing you, correct? Yeah, you'll see in a minute when I tell you when I came back what happened to me. Um, yeah, they were uh, killing me. They know us intimately. Um, they know our weaknesses, and they know my heart is my weakness. If you have it. Cancer is your weakness, they would know that. Um, they told me that you can, they could cause you to have a car wreck to us. It just looks like a car wreck, but they said if we're behind it, we take it as a kill. They said you could fall out of a boat and drown, and if we're behind it to you, looks like a drowning, but if we're behind it, it's our kill. They don't care what it looks like to us. They don't care what it looks like. How many, how many Bigfoot researchers have died of cancer quickly? I know too. Lloyd Pye, he died in months. I don't, I don't know him. I know one that died in two weeks. Squatching for 20 years. So uh, I came back. Um, I, I didn't know how to use my phone, so my buddy had to text Chris for me. Um, I couldn't remember where he lived. <laughs> That's a fucking wreck, you know. So um, Chris got a text from me. Oh, what's your address? And he, he can testify to that. It was real confusing for him. And so I finally got home. And um, before I got left my buddy, I, I had him do the Google Map thing for me because I didn't know how to do it. He said, press this button, you know. So I, um, I got a hold of Chris and... I got to come and see you right away. When can I come? And he told me when. And I, you know, Google Map and started. And it takes me half. It takes me half hour from my house to Chris's house normally. And um, it's funny. I go around this lake when I get to his house. And when I was going around the lake, the marbles in my head came together. And that's the only way I can explain it. <sighs> and I remembered where he lived. So I, I was getting better. All right. Yay. I was getting better. Couldn't remember the name of his dog. I remember Bayada's name, but I could I go to Chris, go in his house, I see his dog. His name is Obi. And then his name. I remembered. I'm getting better, you know. So Chris said, What's wrong, Mark? Because he could tell. Of course I had been a, a week without shaving and then I looked like, you know, I looked like hell. I'll let Chris can testify to all that. I sat down with him in Bayada at the dining room table. And I basically just fucking fell apart. You, you think I'm falling apart now? Mm -mm. This is tame. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> I can imagine he was pretty upset too. And it's hard for him. So um, I told him, I said, I can't go in the swamp anymore. I said, if I go in the swamp, I'm a dead man. They'll kill me. I know it. I can't open that. That's part of the veil for me. I, I mean, uh, not the veil. That's part of the uh, threshold for me. You can go back to that swamp. And frankly, Carrie, I don't know if I can go camping anymore. I don't know if I can go anywhere in the wilderness. I didn't leave my house for two months at night. Two months. I'm a grown man. I was afraid to leave my house at night. You're talking to the guy that knows. So I told him, I said, buy a boat. I'll go fishing with you, Chris. Because, you know, and I love going in the swamp with Chris. This was, you know. And they took that away from me. So, and I'll let Chris speak to this, 
he made a video of it. So go to Trail Bigfoot, look for this video. And he would know the name of it where, because I don't know whether time frame, whether it was a week or two weeks, but after I talked to him, he saw the black whispery creatures in his house. And he made mm -hmm. a film him, and they touched him, you know. And he told me, he said, you know, I believe you, Mark, but it's just a crazy story, you know. I just, they came in my house after you came and talked to me. Mm. It really solidifies what you said to me. Little known to us at the same time, Betty, and if you watch the channel, you see Betty, his sister, her son, who's an adult, saw a black cloaked hooded figure in her home. She calls Bayada and says, oh, my, you remember what, what happened? Of course, Bayada is hearing this, shaking her head. Oh, no, because they didn't tell Betty anything. They kept it from her. So after I come back and tell my story, they come in their homes. They actually touched Chris, you know, brushed up against him. And, and you can go on the channel and, and see all that. Sunday, I left there on a Friday. Sunday, my back broke out in a rash. I'm not talking one or two, covered in a rash. My felt like I had been smoking menthol cigarettes. My chest was aching and it felt heavy. And I couldn't, the fatigue was off the charts. I, I lost, like that week, I only, I think I worked Monday and Tuesday, I went to the ER. I missed Thursday and Friday, I couldn't work. They run all these tests, especially with my heart. I, I'd had a heart attack 14 years ago, and I you know. They said, everything's fine, Mr. Barton, go home. I'm like, but everything's not fine. I can't. So I lived like that. Finally in May, and I, I'm a very active man, okay? I mean, in January, I was in the green swamp with Chris. I come back and I can barely walk to my car after work. And I feel like I'm smoking menthol cigarettes. So my legs started swelling. Well, I know that means your heart's bad. So I finally went to my cardiologist, you know, takes him two weeks to run all these tests. And he says, Mark, everything's okay. He said, but why don't we just go in and look? So I, uh, I said, now let's go look. That means do a calf on me. So they did the calf uh, another week, <laughs> did the calf. And I woke up and um, the doctor was standing there. And he asked me, he said, I put a, I put a stent in your mark. And he said, um, what were your symptoms again? I said, well, I was a little short of breath and, and I was very, very weak. He said, Mark, you had a totally blocked left descending aorta artery and you've been, and guess, and I put a stent in you and we opened you up, but you've been walking around this for three and a half year, uh, three and a half months. Do the math. Get back yeah. to in a week. That's the widow maker. Yeah. Artery there. And you had none of this before then. Talk to Chris. He can, I went out in the green swamp in end of January. And then I left the first week of February. These fuckers, they were killing me. Those fuckers clogged my fucking artery. And you find me and Mark had a heart attack. I have a history of heart disease, don't I? If you find me at all. Well, it makes sense that if, if they're going to do this, that they don't want to give themselves away, obviously. I mean, that's just like letting anybody know anything. <clears throat> And I'm weak, and I'm still weak. I got worse after my stint. I can't work a full week. I can only work four days. And I may have to retire. Every time I walk out to my car, 
I know why. Every time I'm weak and my heart hurts me, I know why. So Chris told me, he said, Mark, do you be prepared because you're going to remember things that you didn't. So I was taking a shower and I don't know the time frame, maybe three weeks after I got back. Why is it about the shower and the marbles in my head came together? And I remembered something they told me and I'd forgotten. If you go to our channel, we were in Cold Creek and we were coming back and it was nighttime and I was on the FLIR. And if you know the FLIR, it blinds you temporarily at night when you pull it away from your eye. So I didn't pay attention to where we were. I was just following everybody else, trying to get some footage. Um, didn't have a lot of footage that night, so I was, you know, had it pointed ahead. I was in the back. And we got to a spot and Chris said, oh, I smell, I smell urine, you know, the, the, the skunky smell. And uh, uh, JB was with us and JB smelt it. I didn't smell it. And we went on it and it, it you know, that comes and goes. It's crazy. It always comes and goes. And, and we went up ahead and I felt like something was behind me. In fact, I kept turning around, looking. I even told JB, I said, JB, get back here with me. I said, because there's something behind me. And I had one of the girls with me. I, <laughs> I said, don't be offended. I don't want you. I want a man, man here. Okay. <laughs> I want JB right here. And JB came back. Can you watch the video? This was before, you know, the, the event and they were referencing it to me talking to me about it. What they said was this. We go through the veil seamlessly. The masters do. But the unlearned tear it. Because they're not obviously as good at it. But they made sure, these sons of bitches, they made sure that I knew that the masters don't do that. And when they tear the fabric, it smells to you like urine. Hmm. It smells musty to you. And they said it was a training session. And we had an unlearned come through, come up behind you. I can't remember the word exactly. I'm going to use the word nudge. And they nudged you. If you watch the video, I lost my cool. I just went into panic mode. And they said, you did exactly what you wanted us to do, what we wanted you to do. You took Chris back to where the urine smell was. And if you watch the video, I did that. I turned around, I, I, I lost my, my marbles. Everybody got, I, you know, I went, went back. I saw a cloaked figure. I ran towards it in the dark. Chris followed up to me and right there, and Chris told me later, he said, that's where the urine smell was. I didn't know that because I was on the floor. They called it a, a train. I went through all that for a fucking training session. Another time I was taking a shower and the marbles came together. I wrote it down so I won't forget it. They said this to me. Consider us as from under the earth. If you're a Christian man, look it up in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Consider us as from under the earth. So I'm assuming what's on the other side of that veil is what is called under the earth. And, and we can't pass it no more than we can pass to the veil above, can we? But I'm a Christian man, so that's how I put it. Uh, another time, and this was pretty recently, maybe a month ago, uh, you know, I told you I normally work four days a week, so I was off on a Friday and I went to get my truck washed and I was coming back. I lived downtown, so I got off the main road. And Chris and I, I had never watched any 411 videos until I got back. And Chris and I would talk and he said, Mark, you really need to watch some 411 videos because 
you know, and I started watching him carry. I, I didn't even know until this that people were missing in the national forest. I had, I had no clue this was going on. So I started watching it and I told Chris, I said, I can't watch these because I know, I know how they disappear. I know how they can turn the corner of the bin and no one can find them. I know how they can appear, disappear, search multiple times in areas. And then all of a sudden they search it one more time and they, they appear. I know how people disappear and then show up in inaccessible areas. I don't know how those, I don't know what's going on there. Fucking masters. The predators. Well, that was something you oh. said to me that I thought was interesting. And, and I think it's okay for us to go here. Um, they told you that they were given well, let me let me tell you. Okay, let me. I got to let me do it word for word, Carrie. Okay. Okay. Because because okay. for some reason, uh, yeah, I'm, I was getting there. <laughs> okay. So I kept telling Chris that I I think I know something about this, but I can't remember it. I I, I felt it in my gut. I said, "There's something," and then all that week I was I wasn't in very good shape. And mentally and emotionally, I, I go through times when I just don't do good. And I was driving, and it was like a dam broke in me. That's the only way I can explain it. My heart hurt, and I went up on, I drove up on the curb in my truck. And thank God there was no nobody parked in that area. It startled me, and then I, I got back down. And the next thing I know, I was sitting in my parking garage. And I remembered what they said to me. They said, this is ours. It was given to us. And we take from what is ours. And I had fell apart. I was a bambling. I called Chris and it was like when I talked to him the first time, uh, he got really concerned about me. I just fell apart. This is ours. It was given to us. And we take from what is ours. I was in a national forest. And they consider that their turf. And if you go on their turf, they can take from what is theirs. Who do you think gave it to them? I have no clue. And I won't speculate because they didn't tell me. And they don't care to tell me that probably. They're, see, they say, like, they say all these things in such arrogance and cockiness bragging and boastful about who and what they are. I have been asked, are they the Nephilim? Are they demons? And I'll tell you the truth. I, I don't, they're not. I had no sense that they were demonic. Am I demonic to the deer because I kill it? Maybe to the deer I am. To the hog, am I a Nephilim? Because maybe to the hog I am. They're simply doing what they do. And in some way, they have uh, permission to do it. And they just do what they do. It's sport. And they hunt us for the kill. You can say Bigfoot's your friend. You talk to him. He cuddles up to you. He kisses you. I don't care. Not once did Chris and I ever feel like our life was in danger. We thought they were our buddies and they were gonna show us in the end. They're gonna, well, they showed me in the end, didn't they? They're not your friend. And if you think they're your friend, they're grooming you for the kill. And they told me we are incredibly patient. I don't think time flows for them like us. They'll wait 20 years, 30 years. It's not like it is for us. They'll play with you. They will toy with you. They know exactly, they'll they tailor the kill to you. What works with me won't work with you, Carrie, or work with Chris. They know us intimately. They knew where I fucking lived and came to see me.
They're not our friends. And if you think they are, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, you're going to be dead wrong one day. If you're hearing voices when you go out, if you're seeing the cloak figures or the pixelation, if you hear knocks repeatedly, grunts, thuds, especially the cloaked figures, you're in danger. You're in, you're in fucking danger. Your life is in danger, in my opinion. If you feel like you're being played with, it's not like we play with our children, okay? Yeah, you're being played with, all right. You're in danger. If you've been out and you feel like you're being led somewhere, if you hear children, I told you this, Carrie, what if they didn't know us? They know as a man, if I hear a child in the forest, I'll go and investigate. If I hear a woman crying out, I'll go. If you're on a trail with people and you hear a child and you go off the trail, you're a dead man. I'm to the point where if I were with a group of people and I was the last one and we were in the National Forest hiking, I'd tie myself to the person in front of me. And if you're the lead, don't go around the corner and get out of sight of everybody. They may turn the corner and you not be there. So I'm hoping tonight something I said will resonate with you and you'll say, Oh my gosh, that's happened to me. I feel like I've been lured away. Well, or, you and I have talked about that. No, go ahead. You and I have talked about that, especially with me. I, I've yeah. heard the kids. Everybody knows my story. I heard kids play. and I had all kinds of strange things going on around me before I ever had any idea what it was. But when I saw it, that was it. That was enough for me. I never went back again. Probably or, saved your goddamn life. Hey, if what, if what you're saying... Remember. Is, is what's going on here. And I believe you. I believe that you experienced this. How can anyone not after listening to you? Something had, has happened to you here. And you know, I'm forever changed. They never, because they didn't finish the job, I feel like there's a part of them in me. I know I don't want to, well, I've already sound like a crazy person, so what the fucking hell, right? So it's like I have an affinity in me. I watch a video like Chris, Chris has put out some videos. Since, you know, I, I can't watch them to completion because they're there. I tell him, I said, Chris, you know, no matter where you go in that swamp, they're, they're there. I feel them. I know it. It's like there's a part of them in me still, you know, and You know, let me, let me tell you what I'm seeing here. And, and I think I'm probably going to be able to speak for a lot of people. I mean, you guys, you've got 20,000 subscribers on your channel. That's not for nothing. OK, if you've watched Mark and Chris over the years, they're just not known for bringing out a bunch of BS. You know, it's all information. It's either their opinion, what they think, or it's or they're showing you what they got. There's not a lot of. So so this is this is. You know, I've watched you guys. Has been a while, but you know, everybody knows I haven't watched anybody in a long time because we started doing this. Something has happened to you. Obviously, anybody that's watched you guys before and sees how you are now, I wouldn't say that you are crazy. I would say that something has happened to you. And the whole thing is just very Bond. It's very Bond villain esque. You know, they're telling you their plan as they're killing you, and you just happen to get away. You know, that. Uh, and you know, thank God you did. But no, God bless you, man. Um, I'm a, I'm a few good. more words and then I'll be done. I'm crazy. You're fine. Trust me. I'm a train wreck now compared to, I came back. You know what all I want to do now? All I want to do now, Carrie, is drink. Well, don't do that. And you know why I don't drink? I told you why. I know why. You want to tell people. Because I, I, I promised my friend Chris I would not drink. I don't drink not because I know it would be bad for me or I could lose my job or I could wreck my car or because of my faith or anything. I, I would love for that to be the reason, okay, because that's it. 
<laughs> That's the acceptable reasons, you know. <laughs> but I don't drink because I promised Chris I, I wouldn't drink. So that promise is keeping me from self-destructing. Probably keeping you alive. And um, I, all I want to do is swear now. That's what I was saying to everyone else, that you apologize to me five or six times for swearing, and I don't care. And that's what I told you. Don't apologize once for I it. Don't I do it. As a, as a Christian man, I, I never swore. I mean, every now and then, but that's all I do now. Be under my breath when I'm driving my car, when I feel pressed by them, when I feel like they're pressing on me, because, you know, they never leave. They're... I carry this. I'm going to carry this. So I got to find a way to deal with this. So I figured if I could do this, if I could get through this, and then if somebody will listen to this, even if it's because I know it's a crazy fucking story, and I'm the only evidence I have is my 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 health, and then what happened to Chris. That's kind of the only evidence that something really happened to me. You know. Otherwise, it's I'm just a crazy. I told Chris, you know, I, I could sit around in a room with people who were abducted by UFOs and I would fit right in with my story. That's, I used to make fun of those people, Carrie. And I'm not saying there's anything related between Bigfoot and UFOs because they didn't tell me any of that. But I'm just saying, I understand that that's the kind of trauma I would fit right in with those people. So if I feel like I saved a life because I went public with this and put myself out there and I acted like a fucking fool, if I could say one person, it would help me cope. And I, that may sound selfish, you know, but I got to find a way because my life has changed. Chris can tell you, I, my life has changed. It I has to find be. a way to make sense of all this, you know? Why, why wasn't I left to die? You know, there's a reason, there has to be a reason. And so if this is the reason, I'm going to take it, Gary. Has to be selfish, Mark. You don't, you don't sound crazy. I think it has taken you a tremendous amount of courage to come on here because there is no benefit for you other than helping someone else. That's, That's the only yeah. benefit there is here for you in this. And I'm hoping that there'll be something finalized in me and then I can say, okay, something good came out of this besides me, you know, and you can say, well, you're alive. Isn't that good? And, you know, but I got to have more than that. Okay. You didn't have to do this. Someday, someday I don't feel alive, you know. Well, you didn't have to do this, and we are we are honored that you ask us to to come on here and do this. I mean, absolutely. And you have also you you've you have you gave me a, a brand new email that you just created because you talked about this. You actually asked me, yeah. you said, Carol, what should I do here?" Because if people want to contact me, I'm willing to talk to them and help them if they've experienced anything like this compare notes, whatever it is. So I want to, I want to put this up here now because I created it earlier okay. that you can contact Mark right here. Mark WB 1975 at gmail.com. And I'll, this is I'll let everybody know if I get one or two. Okay. It'd be easy to answer. If I get flooded, just be patient. Okay. Because some days I don't deal with this real well. You know, you understand, you know some days I just, don't deal well with it. And then I don't want to be well, an email. You know, but, I thought it was a but, good idea just simply because there are going to be a lot of people giving you their support. And I think you need that. I think you need to hear from these people personally that are, yeah. that, that are behind you a hundred percent. Like that. Yeah. If, if, if you feel like I gave you a new perspective and put some pause in it and Jeez. feel like, you need to find where that threshold is for you and not let him cross it. Um, then, you know, let me know. If you have questions, I'll try to answer your questions. 
Um, do you, are we going to take questions now, Kerry? Yeah, I think, I think it, it, if you're, it, you feel like taking some questions from the chat. Yeah, um, let's, let's do it. Let's just okay. do it. Let's do that. Let's take some questions. Just uh, you guys put your questions in caps for us. Um, please just be respectful. And I'm assuming somebody will have one. I don't yeah, there, <laughs> there's, there's going to be some questions come for sure. Um, you know, if it's something we've already covered, then we, we're not going to try be trying to be redundant here. You know, if it's something we've uh, been through already, we're, we're only an hour and 35 minutes into this. And uh, I think this is a good time um, to take some questions. So put those all in caps for us, please. Uh, for those of you that are not used to being here, we like for people to put their questions in capitals. Daniela, you looking out for these? Yeah, I'm looking out. Uh, David Hunt has got one there. Was the cabin in Florida or somewhere else? I'm not going to answer that. Okay. It Fair wasn't enough. in the National Forest. That's all I'm going to say. Fair enough. Okay. Um, Ray Dor, how did you receive communication? Voice, mind speak? Okay. Um, I'm going to use the word. It's really hard to explain. Okay. I mean, because we're putting human words into something that's like anyway um i guess you could call it mind speak i heard their voice so i know what they sound like i know what their voice sounds like but yeah i guess it was a voice but then some things they just showed me they just put the understanding in my head the whole thing okay so and and that word mind speak i'm going to address it every time it's a pretty word I'm telling you right now, it's not pretty when it happens to you. It's violating. And it makes your mind marbles. And my brain is messed up because of it. And it's not like me and Carrie talking. Okay? That's not, it's nothing like that. You're left, you're left in very bad shape afterwards. So that's a pretty word. I don't know who coined that fucking word. To me. Call it mind rape, okay? That's what it is. A mind mosh pit. That's what it is. Okay, I'm sorry. I went off the bat. I, I don't mean to yell at you. No, that, you that's okay. Got one here from uh, Ern Harvick. Has Mark ever thought of seeking out a Native American shaman? Well, um, I'm not working on that, but I'm working on something else, okay? Um, I'm working on something else. Um, somebody that um, deals with trauma, uh, people that have had traumatic uh, experiences, um, you know, because um, I'm getting better. I feel like I'm getting, maybe I'm not, you know, maybe I'm deceiving myself. Um, I feel like I'm getting better. But, you know, it's kind of like he takes two steps forward and three backwards. So uh, I haven't thought about that. I, I'm not really into that. Uh, that's not a put down. Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but no, I haven't. I've actually got a contact for you uh, for a lady. Her name is Barb Charlton. She does emotional freedom techniques. She helped me tremendously. And okay. uh, just, just you'll have it on hand if you ever feel like you need it. Okay. At least you'll have that one. And I'm sure others will, uh, will have some more information for you too. But emotional freedom techniques, they work. Uh, it's just, it's something different. It's like acupuncture without the needles. It's kind of, Okay. kind of weird ready cool ready cool has actually got a good question here uh do you think bigfoot are the slaves to these others do you th are they willing participants or are yeah, they the yeah they live across the veil they're part of their environment they're they're uh it's part of who they are so they they are not slaves if they're slaves they're willing slaves um it, they all come up from across the veil so they're they're mad they're called masters they're not just masters to us they're masters of the beast the hairy beast, but they're willing. That's my opinion. Okay. okay. Andy gone fishing. Did the masters or hairy beast leave you evidence at at, her, at your home of saying we are here? Are you talking about when I would go out and walk? Yeah. Other than, other than just seeing a cloaked beast. No, yeah. they don't leave evidence. No, they they don't leave evidence. They're 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 not going to. Um, 
they got their point across to me was to get your ass back in the swamp. And I did, and I, I did what they wanted. They, you know, they're, if you've never seen them, they're there and they're gone, just like that. It's just crazy. And your mind, um, listen to Mac's video, because I explain it really there, well there. You back up, and you, every, even though you may have done it 20 times, you just back up and move forward, trying to recreate it because it's fleeting. And you back up, you know, you do it. Just, you know, I, and you can't, but you try because you're, you're trying to grasp it. Um, but they don't leave evidence. Okay. Um, Lisa De Fruscio. Fruscio. Uh, what do you what do they sound like? Can you compare it to anything worldly? Well, I understood it, didn't I? You spoke to me in English. Yeah, I guess. I guess in what kind of tone, maybe, or in, in that kind of sense. They're, they talk to me in an arrogant, cocky, proud. Bond, bond villain is how I picture bond, it in my head. Is that bond villain telling you they what they're going to do? Okay, they treated me that I was less than they were. I was prey. It's a fucking prey. Like I treated deer. I treated deer less than me, don't I? So they treated me like an animal. Like I would treat an animal I was hunting. They only showed me all this because they wanted a great kill. They didn't care if I understood it. I kind of like payback time, didn't I? I wasn't supposed to be on it. I wasn't supposed to know this shit. Okay? That's um, how I see it. I wasn't supposed to know this shit. But they talk, and it sounded like a human voice, like a man. Okay. okay. It sounded like a woman. It sounded masculine, and it sounded in all those tones that I told you. And then when they showed me things, I it's um, unless it happens to you, you know, they bully, they're bullies. And I hate to use that word because it's so, it's such a, a word now, you know. They bullied my head and then they just show me things. And it's like what they showed me made, it shoved everything else out so that it bullies. But I understood it. At least I felt like I understood it. And I told you, I even asked them a question. How did I do that? I did I I don't even remember how I did that. Okay, but I did question them and they answered me because they're arrogant sons of bitches. Are you concerned now about them doing anything to you? I mean, Chris mentioned them coming into his house. I mean, yeah, it, I am. So they will not come in. They know they're not coming in my fucking. And I'm not saying this to say Chris invited them in. They know they are not allowed in my home because that's crossing the threshold for me. And I have, I've turned into, I live in a condo, so when I go out my door, I go out into a hallway, you know? And I used to, like if I had a bunch of groceries and stuff to bring in, I'd open my door and leave it open and just go in and out until I'm done, then I close the door and lock it. You know what I do now? I open the door, close it, put my stuff down, go back out, close it, get my stuff, open it come in, close the door. You know why I do that? I don't do it because I'm really afraid, although I'm letting them know they're not crossing the threshold. By not going in the swamp, I'm letting them know they're not, I'm, they're not coming through the threshold. Carrie, you gotta find what that means for you. If you feel like you're prey, anybody listening, You'll know what your threshold is for you. Maybe for you it's prayer. When you walk around your house and anoint your house with oil, or you do the um, um, the smoke thing, I can't remember what it's called, you know, where you burn incense or whatever in your home. Right. Whatever that is for you, I don't know. I know what it is for me. But yes, I do think about it because like I said, there's. I have this affinity with them now. You know, maybe I can use that to my good, to the greater good. But see, it's like there's a piece of them in me. I don't know. I, I, I know I sound crazy when I say that, but they didn't finish the job. So I think about it. 
you know, coming in my fucking house, you know. Or I've even drawn the line in my apartment complex or in my condominium complex, you know, the whole thing. You know, you're not coming in. Yeah. And you know what? Isn't this all that time I was helpless in that chair, but now I have been given a tool to kick their fucking asses. It's payback time, bitches. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even it's, if you take my life now, oh, the word is out. Fuck you. Okay. Well, I hope a lot of people watch this and at least, at least understand that you are completely different. I mean, you talk about, you know, what this is for me. I don't go in the woods if I can help it. You know, that and people call me a fraidy cat scare. I don't care. It's self-preservation as far as I'm concerned. I have a good reason. If I feel like for not going in the woods. So I feel you on all that. But I'm, I'm glad that you are able to put this information out there, that this is what happened to you. Everybody has a story in this. And it's all their perception and how they see it. You seem to have answers to a lot of things that we speculate on, that these are things that they told you straight up. They either put it in your head as a thought or just knowledge. Now you know this thing. Or they told you straight up. This is information. How, how, how others want to see that and take that, that's on them. Well, you could but you, not a person here can say anything about your courage and, and being afraid of anything because it took a hell of a lot for you to come on here and do this. I'll I say that. I'll say that. I bear, that in, my I bear in my body and my mind the price to, to bring this. You know, I mean, I have this now, but I paid a heavy, I paid a price, you know, and okay, here we go. You know, um, you know. any more questions, anything else? Uh, yeah. Uh, are they just tro are, we, are we just trophies to them? Uh, yeah. Are we a source of food? No, they don't need us. We're just trophies. You know, they go back. They said they they told me they go back from where they came, and they celebrate the kills, and uh, they get recognition. And you know how um, kind of like when what we do around our buddies. You know, I go out and kill this huge rack. This huge deer, this buck that has a huge rack, go back and show my buddies and we celebrate and we drink and they pat me on the back and I put it up on my mantle. That's what they do. And how they do that, I don't know, but they, they, they definitely in great arrogance told me they get recognized for the kills and they love great kills because it's a trophy for them. But, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, they, they, don't, they don't need us. Well, they can just take people out, though, can't they? What 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 do you think they get out of? I mean, how how is it a a hunt for them? Do you think what what do they get out of it if they can just take anybody? Um, Sport. I don't. Why do they just take people and other people they groom? I don't have the answer. The big problem, and I'll just warn everybody, is we think like men. That's all we you know. They're not men. They don't think like us. They don't have the same motivation we do. They don't have the same rationalization we do. They're not human. So they don't think like a human. I try to take this understanding and put it in human reasoning then project that onto them. And it, it doesn't work. Why do they just take people? But obviously, and maybe they were being groomed and we don't know. I, I, I have no answer. Why um, I was listening a, a story about a, a, a man who was being chased by uh, an invisible creatures and he got in the field and uh, all the whole story, but he just heard something told him to run. And Chris brought it to my attention and he said, Mark, he said what you said. So I looked up the video and I watched it. And it meant so much to me because I thought, oh, it happened to somebody else. And you know what? He outran him and they didn't get him. It makes no sense in some ways. So I don't know. Yeah. 
No, I, I know it happens. That's all. You know. Um. Let me see. Uh, Gemini Moon, why do you feel like you're still alive? Do you feel like something was protecting you so you could get away? Yeah, we talked about it. Well, yeah. I, I, re I consider it divine intervention. I was helpless in a chair. I um, nothing helped me. I was I was going to die there. You know? And then when the fire popped and the voice said run, it was like divine intervention, and they couldn't touch me. And then, yes, it was divine intervention. And if if the Father or God or whoever you want to use, whatever word you want, had not intervened mm. on my behalf. Now, you could say, oh, wow, that's a really cool thing, isn't it? I'm like, well, that comes with a great weight, doesn't it? You know? And uh, I think a lot of this we've already covered. I'm just, I was just looking at another one here for you, Mark. Okay. Uh, where do you think they come from? The ideas? They come um, from under the earth. Okay, let me just bring my Christian perspective in. Okay, there's a scripture that says, of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. So there's a realm in heaven that we can't pass to, obviously. We're not, no, no, no. It's not talking about outer space. There's a heavenly realm that we can't go through the veil. We live on the earth. And then there's a veil and there's things under the earth. Even the things under the earth bow to God, obviously, because when he intervened, they couldn't touch me. Now, if you're not a Christian and you struggle with that, try to put that in some understanding that, that will work for you. There's a veil. They called it the veil. It's flexible. They can pass in and out. The unlearned rip it because they're unlearned, but they're learning. And they live on the other side. And what's on the other side is toxic to us. They use the word toxic. That's where they live. Okay? That's my understanding. That's, the, that's all I have for you. Well, how, how do you feel right now, man? Do you feel like... Uh... You felt like you've gotten out everything that you want to say? I have nothing more to say. You know, I, I can, I have nothing. I've, I've said everything that they have, that I remember that they told me in the words that they told me. I, I try not to add my words. I mean, I have my opinion, but I try not to add my words. Well, we're, we're not going to bombard you with a ton more questions here. I just don't want to let everybody know that they, you know, People are going to want to support you through this, uh, that they can contact you at this email, yeah. markwb1975 at gmail.com. Um, and I just want to say thank you for for letting us uh, be the platform for you to get this information out. Absolutely. You're very welcome. Um, if it's, I feel better. You know. Good. I'm Good. glad. I think. I think I think once you go back and watch and read through the chat, you're going to feel even even better. So uh, I think there were one or two uh, things that I mean, out of 570 people, I'll, I'll say that now that are that are that are just in the chat. That's not everybody that's watching. That's just who's in the chat right now. It's 570 people. Um, but our, our moderators took care of them. Did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. If somebody doesn't believe or think, uh, hey, it's okay with me, you know, it, hey, I understand that, you know. There's trolls everywhere, man. Yeah, and I, but I understand that it's, it's difficult, and I, I understand that. And that's and, long enough, <laughs> you know, you know how it goes. If I wanted to quit squatching, Chris and I have the relationship that I could just walk up to and say, Chris, I need a break. You know, I, I've been accused of that, and you know. That, it would have been easy, you know, okay, we'll take a break, you know. Well, anybody that's watched you guys, like I said before, for any any period of time before this interview, for what it, for the type of interview it is, for this information that you brought forth to us, uh, they're going to be, they can see the corollary here. And, and I hope they contact you. I hope they do. I hope you guys uh, uh, bring the support. The prayers. Uh, if you have anything that you think might help, Mark, uh, you got that email. 
And Mark, thank Daniela, wonderful job as always. Uh, you do fantastic. We'll be back here Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central for the researchers report. We don't know who we're going to have on yet. But uh, Mark, thanks again for being here. You got my phone number. You contact me anytime. I'm here for you. Thanks, Mark. Hey, Gary, can we just talk a few minutes after all this? Or? Absolutely. Just hang around. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Good show. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everybody.